Second time I've done that, and gosh, it felt incredible. We are back with the reaction video to my guy, Dave Ramsey. Uh, not known for being a real estate guy unless you're paying all cash, but he's going to talk about how we've lost all his money flipping houses, and I want to see and learn a little more about how Dave and what this was like in the 80s and what expertise he has in the real estate space. So I did my first flip in 1983 the year before i was born so that would be 30 years ago right or 40 years ago 40, uh, 40 years, years ago. 40 ago. years ago 40 years ago yeah the first flip i did i was so stupid that i thought that everything that was a foreclosure was a good buy that if it said foreclosure that it must be cheap mm. I equated foreclosure with cheap, which sometimes is true. I think most people do. But I bought a, a HUD repo. They used to put them in the newspaper, and you would bid on them, FHA, re, re, FHA foreclosures, HUD repo. Out of the news, you had a newspaper as a bid process. I turned in the bid. I talked a banker into financing 100% of it because I had a real estate degree. I was a real estate guy. <laughs> Let's pause there and, and start. So foreclosures are a couple different ways. Number one, properties, they're in foreclosure. So when someone doesn't make their payments, they could file foreclosure. During that period of time, it's what's called pre-foreclosure. Ultimately, that property will be sold on the courthouse steps. Dave's already made a couple major mistakes, and we're in the first minute of the video. I knew all about real estate, and I was 23 years old, so I was... Didn't really know it all when you were 100% financing, but we'll put a pin in that. We'll come back. He's a oh freaking gosh. genius, okay? And so I bought this house. Um, I knew everything about the house before I bought it. I'd gone through it with a fine-tooth comb. Okay. The um, In those days, they used uh, we, we used uh, uh, copper pipes mm -hmm. for the water supply. And the, co the house had been sitting empty, and so the copper pipes had frozen and split. And so it was pretty much a sprinkler system mm -hmm. underneath, mm -hmm. uh, and you had to go through and redo the copper pipes. And I knew how to do that because I'd done renovations work in high school, working wow. for my dad okay. in the real estate business. So I crawled around on my little back under there with a little torch and fixed all of spliced all these pipes fixed so the first question there if the property had already foreclosed and gone back to the bank in nearly all of the cases right you can get a home inspection this would be your opportunity to inspect it and actually turn the utilities on this water would have came out you'd have done it during your due diligence period and you had a chance to actually see what was going on here now if you bought the property at auction like i said what dave's referencing could happen but he mentioned at least buying it after the fact so why didn't he know so 100 percent financing first issue second issue i didn't get a home inspection so I didn't know what I was buying. Anytime you're buying something that's already been foreclosed, if you can get an inspection period, it gives you a chance to see what's really going on with the property before you buy it so you know the issues and you could renegotiate the price if there were issues you weren't aware of when you went under contract. All the pipes, uh, put new carpet in it, went in on the weekends, and Sharon and I repainted it. Okay. And I kept all of my receipts for what I spent and paid myself zero labor. Okay. That's how stupid I was. And we put the house on the market, and it sold in five weeks. So I'm a huge success. Kaboom. Net, net, net. When I got done, I added up what we had in it, what we paid for the closing cost, what we paid on the closing cost on the resale, uh -huh. what actual, after every dollar is recorded, what actual net profit did I make? $842. You're an overnight success. Uh, Two things we don't know there. Number one, what did he pay in fees and interest for the incredibly lucrative 100% financing that he got? My guess in a market like today, use hard money, probably 18% plus points into fees, probably the effective interest rate was in the 20 some percent, right? It was 18%. Usually there'd be usury laws. There's amount of max interest and lenders when they do 100% financing would charge points and fees beyond that, which would push that rate into the 20%. Number two, if you didn't make money, you bought it wrong. All the money's made when you buy, so he overpaid. Just because something's a foreclosure doesn't mean it's a deal. The bank may misprice it, they price it too high, and you've had to negotiate a better deal or wait for that price to come down over time. Now, game on. Can't nobody tell I'm you that. I'm obviously nothing. good at this, <laughs> which means that I probably paid myself, what, a dollar an hour yeah. labor? Yeah. 
Well, you know, I didn't get paid for the labor. The 842 oh was with this free labor I had. I had slave labor, me. <laughs> yeah. You and were my your wife. Own. And my wife. Yeah. So well, we're in there. So that was job one. Okay. okay. The next one I, w- I bought, and I thought, well, I'm not buying any houses in bad neighborhoods because I don't know anything about all that stuff. I'll get in trouble. But this guy called me up, and he had a house, and he sold it to me for $7,000. And I ran the what I thought was the estimate, and I had three contractors look at it and give us bids. So I don't know what house you're buying, what Dave calls 1983, 30 years ago. I think that's more like 40. I don't know what house you're buying for $7,000 in the the 80s, but I still think that house was likely right terrible, right? Again, if you're buying stuff, not inspecting it, and you're buying in the worst part of any city at the lowest possible price point, that's always a recipe for disaster. So he might not be buying the right things if you're just buying the cheapest possible thing and you're buying only because it's cheap not actually looking at value and trying to see where the opportunity is and uh the first contractor wanted a 1500 hundred dollar deposit up front never saw him again right went to his trailer and knocked on the door in the trailer park trying to get my 1500 wonder i I didn't get shot by the way he had already left and gone to kalamazoo or wherever it is contractors go when they take your fifteen hundred dollars because you're an idiot and you give it to them up front moron yeah and so then i started on the second contractor the third contractor the fourth contractor and uh when i finished with that property it i had already done a whole bunch of other deals by then Mm -hmm. uh like uh 60 or 80 more deals. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. By the time I finished that property, I ended up only losing $14,000 on a house I paid 7000 for four and a half years later. What? I have a lot of questions. How do you buy a house for $7,000 and lose $14,000? Now, there are crazy things that happen in real estate, right? I understand contractors can be a problem, but number one, paying for the work up front, why are you going through four contractors on every job? And in the timeline it took you to do one deal, you did 60 others. The, well, where was the expertise for the 60 and why wasn't it applied to that particular deal? One of the things we think about when we flip homes, anytime the rehab amount becomes a significant portion of the sales price, I'll call that 50% or more. If I'm buying a house for 100 grand with the repairs are 50 grand or more, doesn't mean I won't do it, but a signal flare goes up in my mind because that's where risk, there's something so wrong with that home, it needs so many repairs that I've got to be extra cautious making sure I'm buying it at the right price so that when I do the repairs, I calculate my time, I calculate the opportunity cost of both my time and money, it still hits the profit that I want. There's only a handful of variables in buying a house, right? You know, what can you buy it for? What can you sell it for? What does it cost to repair? And what is your cost of capital? Even if you're paying cash, you should still run the opportunity cost because you could be doing something else with your money. I'm not seeing where Dave's talking about that. And so you've got to be a real student of the game and understand what you're getting into. There'll always be surprises. Your budget could be off. If you estimated 20 grand in repairs, if that's the real budget, I would estimate 10 or 20% high. So I've got a buffer for things that come up. But spending 200% of the purchase price in a house is something you should never, never do. Oh my gosh. This is how dumb I am. So if that had, wait, if that That's second house two, had been your first house. I would have been out of business. Yeah. I would have been Nate. Yeah. You would have been like, I'm never doing this My again. wife would have been going, yeah. Instead, I managed to delay the pain on that one. Meanwhile, doing a whole bunch of others. And I made a lot of money. Yeah. I made a lot of money. I ended up in my life. I have owned over 2000 pieces of real estate. I flipped real estate as my job for four years by I was using 90 day notes to fix them and flip them. I made, and I started buying property at 70 cents on the dollar minus repairs. Wow. So a hundred thousand dollar property, I buy it for 70 minus the repairs. That mm-hmm. was the formula. That formula is really common. 70% uh, ARV is what's called after repair value. 70% of that number minus the repairs bakes you in about a 10 to 15% profit, depending on how you're structuring it and your cost to sell. So questions I have though, if Dave's crushing it as much as he says here, where's the cash? Right? Why are you still financing these at 90% or the money you reference 100%? Why are you borrowing all the money? Why don't you do it in cash? Because if you're as successful as you're saying you are in this video, cash wouldn't be the problem. 
So something's not lining up here, and I'm hoping he addresses it later in the video. And that means I bought a lot of foreclosures, a lot of estates. I did some historic rehabs. Mm -hmm. We've done a bazillion deals. I can walk wow. around Nashville and show you, I did that house, that house, that house, that house 30, 40 years later. I want to take that tour. And uh, now you don't want to be in that neighborhood probably, but um, okay. <laughs> some of those neighborhoods are now gentrified, but... Um, Gotcha. Yeah, they've come back a long way from seven thousand dollars. Now it's two hundred and sixty to live on that street, and it's a Dave's getting a little edgy here. Great property, not really. Still in Dodge City. You shoot up and down the street if it's Dodge City. I don't care whether it's gentrified or not. Mm. So anyway, the uh, sh you're killing me here. But yeah, so this is this is my real estate career. So. By the way, that was Dave's team flying in there saying, whoa, 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 you're about to be canceled, but neither here nor there. When I get aggravated at the idiots on Tic Tac, it's because I was one of them. Yeah. Okay. I was doing the exact same stuff and I can smell neophyte beginner a mile away. Yeah. Because I was I was tw I was 23. I was going to get rich in real estate. I made eight hundred and forty two dollars minus the cost of my labor. I lost fourteen thousand dollars, and then I went on to make money and make money. And I started figuring it out that I had mm -hmm. to, you know, had to I had to I had to be tough with contractors. I had to get with good ones, and I, and I had to have be tough on schedules. Mm -hmm. You had to be finished, mm -hmm. and then you put the house on the market aggressively and you flip it. You don't keep it ever. Everything you just said makes a tremendous amount of sense, but why not do that? We're talking about the two bad ones. If there were 60 great ones, let's get an app on the store. Maybe you actually made money. Uh, you know, not like her. We're not in the rental business. Right. And then I, then I end up buying a bunch of property. I buy packages of houses. And I buy 10 or 20 at once, and they were rental portfolio. Mm -hmm. And I, I lost every bit of that when I went bankrupt in, uh, in, in 1988. Five years later, I wow. had now owned, I had four million dollars worth of real estate when we went in. That's a fast. Went into bankruptcy. Yeah. That's a whirlwind, Dave. It was. I worked all the time, and I was really, really good at doing deals. But I'm saying to but, go from zero to hero, or yeah. hero to zero, and back. Ooh. Zero to hero to zero. <laughs> That's a PhD in DUMB oh, is what goodness. that is. Yeah. And so, but uh, I got a lifetime of learning there, and it led me to have a bullcrap meter that is very sensitive to real estate people mm -hmm. and uh so you, you know when you guys are talking about real estate real estate real estate real estate because real estate's real hot right right now. it's a popular fad topic again everybody wants to do a real estate deal everybody wants to do a flip everybody wants to own a real estate and your renters will pay your rent renters will pay the payment you don't worry about it, it says people who've never had renters mm -hmm. that's a dumb butt statement I don't really know what Dave's even talking about. Um, tenants do pay your payment, right? That's just how it works. I buy a house for, say, $200,000 with the goal of having it rent in Arizona, this is the Arizona numbers, renting for about probably $1,500 would be a, a number, somewhere around twelve dollars or $1,500. We don't follow the 1% rule. We can't get that here. Um, but the tenant is paying the payment, right? So you should be looking at a minimum number of cash flow per month after all of your expenses. We know what the expenses are. Taxes, insurance, HOA, management, repairs, vacancy, all those things, right? So we know what that is. We factor that in. We still want to make $400 after it. So when you say that the tenant's paying your payment, they really are. They pay it off. If it's a 30-year mortgage, at the end of that, you've got an asset, right? More millionaires are created than real estate than anything else. Unfortunately, it didn't work for Dave, but... It would have worked for Dave. He just chose not to. And right, he's acting like he didn't do it. But Dave's been to a restaurant, had a bad meal of food and didn't stop him from eating. Right. But so he did a, two bad real estate deals and he went bankrupt. He went bankrupt because he was over leveraged. If you look in the data, what happened to Dave Ramsey, debt crushed him, which is why now he pitches being debt free. You should have no debt. And he's not wrong in that, right? Being conservative and getting out of debt. I think he does a really good service for people that want to get out of bad debt. And that's where the Dave Ramsey knowledge base stops. Dave doesn't teach people how to be wealthy because he made all of his money talking on talk shows, not actually in real estate, right? He could have actually taken the same thing and had done real estate with it. He didn't really, really, he would have done better, right? But just because someone had a bad experience doesn't mean they're an expert just because you failed at something. Now, he went through a very tough time in the 80s, but his issue was not the real estate. Had he hold it even fine, his issue was radical over leverage and then not having a working model that he could actually apply and learn and keep doing more and more deals that actually made sense.
Let me tell you. Let me teach you some words. Chapter thirteen. Mm. Bankruptcy for I will pay you when by God I want to. Okay, and let me tell you what you can do with a tenant who's in a bankruptcy. Nothing. Wow. You have a stay on you, which is an injunction. A federal court has looked at you like a dog and said, stay. And as a creditor, if you even call your tenant, you can be held in contempt really? of court. Wow, you I didn't know that. You cannot talk to them. You cannot do anything except everything they wish as far as repairs while they pay zero rent. Wow. Because you stay, dog, stay. Yeah, you learn this when you've had a couple of them. So when renters are always, they're going to pay the payment, and it's a free house, and I'm, I, you know, I, I have a jet airplane, and you're just an <laughs> idiot. You're just an idiot on t- TikTok. That's what you are. To be fair to Dave's point, there is no shortage of idiots on TikTok talking about how they don't make money. But that the difference is Dave's being just as big of an idiot talking about what, something he doesn't know anything about, right? So there's no shortage of idiots out there, but you got to get around people that actually do it. I own a tremendous amount of real estate. I can tell you that I've never had a tenant file bankruptcy, not to say that it won't happen, but there is a way to navigate this in a way that isn't that risky. Again, it comes with reserves, making sure you are cash flowing every month and you're walking through it and you understand all the math the equity, your debt, and you understand all the mechanics of real estate. It's not hard to learn. Apparently, Dave never learned it. Now he teaches people how to be rich, which is very, very odd um, to me for someone that doesn't seem like they have a lot of experience other than selling uh, their thoughts on a radio show and making all your money that way. Believable. Well, here's- so real, real estate is great, but you there's a people factor with the contractors. There's a people factor with the renters. Mm-hmm. There's a people factor when I overestimate how what the uh how 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 much money i'm going to make i underestimate the con- when i overestimate how what the uh how 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 much money i'm going to make i underestimate the contractor the time it's going to take to run it i i i think it's going to sell faster than it is Mm -hmm. because i'm always a glass half full guy and right before that's when you get your freaking nose bloodied slow down people pay cash for this stuff and run it like a business not like a get rich quick scheme it's your only hope of doing making money in real estate it is not a poor man's game i think that's the part that anybody can take away from this is it would be one thing dave i feel like if you were sitting here going i tried that real estate thing and this is what happens and it was just like this negative story but then you go on and figure out the best way to do this the smarter way to do it the way that actually works and that's what you're teaching it's not like you're saying stay away from real estate never do it there's just a right and a wrong way to do it i was 24 years old i had a million dollar net worth in 1984 and I made $250,000 that year. That's 20,000 bucks a month mm. in 1984. Rich. Okay? In 1988, my taxable income was $6,000. Look, that was a really difficult time in the 80s. And Dave's not saying, he's saying do everything in all cash. I think that he's not wrong in saying that. He's just not right because he had a bad experience. What I would say is you got to have, you got to know your math equation. Do you need reserves? Yes. But if you're buying a house for short term and you're borrowing hard money, if that's where you're at, that's okay if you're but put money down put 20 or 30 percent down have all the repairs set aside have additional reserves if you don't have that no you shouldn't play dave's right but it doesn't mean you couldn't go get in the game find a great deal and find someone with the money like all things right there's lots of different ways to do it dave's models one way i don't believe it's the right way i think it's a great way to get out of debt i don't think it's a way to be wealthy but i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments